Now perhaps we have a resistor with an unknown resistance and we want to measure it. Perhaps we can't remember how to read the coloured bands or maybe the, we just want to verify the resistance of it. Now one way we can do that is using a circuit like this. Now this is actually called a Wheatstone bridge, invented actually not by Sir Charles Wheatstone but by Samuel Christie. However, a few years later, Sir Charles Wheatstone improved it, he made it popular, and therefore it's named, I suppose, after him. And the whole point in this circuit is that we can find out the value of an unknown resistor. So, very simply, we've got a power supply here, um, and what we have are four resistors connected like this. Now, I'm just going to label this one as R1. We've got uh, R2 over here, and this one is going to be a variable resistor, so we can alter the size of that resistance. We then have resistor 3 over here, and this resistor here is going to be our unknown quantity. So R, I'll put a little question mark there, this is the unknown uh, mystery resistor that we want to find the resistance of. And also what we have here, across this loop and this loop of the circuit, we're going to bridge it with a device. Now I'm just going to put the symbol for an ammeter there, so what we might have is a super sensitive ammeter that can measure really, really small currents. Often this is called a galvanometer. So basically this is something that is bridging this bit, or these two bits of the circuit. And that's why it's called a Wheatstone bridge. And effectively what we can do is we can balance the circuit by using um, the variable resistor over here. If we know the value of R1 and R3, if we balance it appropriately, we can then find the value of this unknown resistance. Now, other things that we might know about this is that uh, we maybe want to think about the current in resistor 1, which I'm going to call I1. We'll have a current in I2, and finally we'll have a current in that resistor. And again, across each of these components, they'll have their own potential difference. So I'm going to call this one V1, V2, V3, and our unknown V as well. So that's some data that we need. Now let's go back to the, some of the essentials of A-level physics. Let's think about Kirchhoff's first law how the sum of the currents into a junction is equal to the sum of the currents out of the junction. And we're going to take the case where we know R1 and R3, we've adjusted R2 with our unknown resistor to make sure that there's no current either moving through this ammeter, so it's either flowing this way or this way. So effectively the current in this part of the circuit is zero and we've got a balanced circuit. Now if there's no current flowing down this loop in the circuit, then that means the current coming in, I1, must be equal to the current coming out, I2. So we can say that I1 is equal to I2. We can also look at this part here. So at this junction here, the current in I3 must be the same as this current I question mark. So I3 is equal to I question mark. And we get that from looking at Kirchhoff's first law. We can then apply Kirchhoff's second law. Okay, and Kirchhoff's second law is about the sum of the EMFs being equal to the sum of the potential differences around any closed loop. Now, if there's no current flowing across this ammeter, then that means that it must have the same electrical potential here as it does here. So if we're thinking about the potential differences, the electrical potential at the circuit here is the same as this value over here. Otherwise, that would cause there to be a current moving, or current flowing through that. And what that means then, is that effectively the ratio of the potential difference in this part to this part must be the same as the ratio of the potential difference in this part to this part. Okay, so what we can then say is that V2 over V1, the ratio of their potential differences, must be the same as the ratio of the potential differences here, which is V unknown divided by V3. Now, of course, we know that there's an equation that says V is equal to I times R, and we can apply that to any point in the circuit. So what I'm going to think about is V2 in terms of I2 and R2, and so on. So if I just put that into this uh, thing below, so we can say that I2 multiplied by R2 over I1 R1 equals I question mark R question mark over I3 R3, bit of a mouthful, but all I've done is just replace V with I R. This ratio here, well, we also saw that at this point I2 equals I1, and therefore these must be the same value, so they cancel. And also this, these two values are the same, so they cancel as well. And what we can then say is that R2 over R1 equals the unknown resistance divided by R3. We can rearrange to make this a subject, 
and then say that this unknown resistance must be equal to R2 multiplied by R3 divided by R1. And so if you have a fixed value of R1 that you know and a fixed value of R3, and then you also know the value of R2 because that's what you've decided to adjust it to, you can then work out very precisely the value of this unknown resistor. So that's just a little more about a weak stone bridge. And this is important because it's just an everyday example that could come up in exam questions because it relies on you knowing about things like Kirchhoff's first law and Kirchhoff's second law and actually how we can apply that just with simple equations like V equals IR in maybe a slightly different uh, kind of circuit to what you're used to. Anyway, if you like this video, uh, make sure that you do subscribe uh, both to YouTube and also to my website, alevelphysicsonline.com, and also sign up for all the videos that you need for the rest of your A-level course, competitively priced and hopefully things which are going to really help you as you prepare for your final exams. Thank you very much.